OpenAI's Dev Day just happened and they made a ton of new announcements and there's a bunch of exciting ones. So we're gonna watch the keynote together. We're gonna go over all the new updates. Let's go. All right, the first thing that they're launching is GPT-4 Turbo. And it is very similar to what GPT-3.5 Turbo did to GPT-3.5. It's much faster, it has a higher rate limit and it's much less expensive. Let's take a look. GPT-4 Turbo will address many of the things that you all have asked for. We've got six major things to talk about for this part. Number one, context length. A lot of people have tasks that require a much longer context length. GPT-4 Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. All right, look at that face. He could not be more pleased with himself. So this is really good news though. Now, GPT-4 Turbo supports 128,000 tokens. This is on par with Anthropic's model. So there's really nothing setting Anthropic apart at this point. However, usually with larger context sizes, models tend to forget what's in the middle of them and they effectively remember only what's at the beginning and the end. But Maybe they solved that. I'll definitely be doing plenty of tests on this, but it's an exciting announcement nonetheless. That's 300 pages of a standard book, 16 times longer than our 8K context. And this is gonna be especially good for coding. And in addition to longer context length, you'll notice that the model is much more accurate over a long context. And right there he said it, the model is much more accurate over a long context. So that is a really important distinction to make and I'm glad he said it, but of course I'm gonna be testing it anyways. Next, they're announcing more control. And the first thing he mentions is something called JSON mode, which I think is super interesting. And that means that the model will only reply with JSON, which is really cool because that's especially good for developers who are writing things in natural language, but expect JSON in return. Number two, more control. We've heard loud and clear that developers need more control over the model's responses and outputs. We have a new feature called JSON mode, which ensures that the model will respond with valid JSON. This has been a huge developer request. It'll make calling APIs much easier. Now he's talking about improved function calling. This was already something GPT-4 did better than any other model that I've seen. And it's extremely important for building applications on top of OpenAI's API, especially when you're talking about agents. He also says that you can call many functions at once. So these are welcomed improvements. The model is also much better at function calling. You can now call many functions at once and it'll do better at following instructions in general in a new feature called reproducible outputs. You can pass a seed parameter and it'll make the model return consistent outputs. This of course gives you a higher degree of control over model behavior. This rolls out in beta today. All right, and here he's talking about something called reproducible outputs, which basically means when you give OpenAI a seed prompt, it will respond back with more consistent responses depending on what that prompt is. This sure sounds a lot like temperature, but maybe it's different. And in the coming weeks, we'll roll out a feature to let you view log probs in the API and they're rolling out logs, which is also very welcome. Number three, better world knowledge. You want these models to be able to access better knowledge about the world, so do we. So we're launching retrieval in the platform. You can bring knowledge from outside documents or databases into whatever you're building. Okay, and right there, they probably wiped out a number of different companies that have already built RAG on top of OpenAI. Essentially, what they just said is, now you can bring your documents and your knowledge directly to ChatGPT without having to do anything with RAG. So I wonder how they're doing it. We're definitely gonna test it out. But again, this is just a whole nother set of startups that should be really worried right now because OpenAI AI built their functionality. We are just as annoyed as all of you, probably more, that GPT-4's knowledge about the world ended in 2021. We will try to never let it get that out of date again. GPT-4 Turbo has knowledge about the world up to April of 2023. Now this is interesting because Elon Musk X.AI just launched their AI product called Grok and they have up-to-date information based on Twitter at all times. Not from April, but literally to the second. So it's really, really interesting to see how these two AI companies are gonna compete with each other. Number four, new modalities. Dolly 3, GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, and the new text-to-speech model are all going into the API today. This is awesome news. Now GPT-4's API has Dolly, so you can generate images. It has GPT-4 Turbo, obviously, and it also has TTI, which is text-to-speech. And I should mention that's GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, so it can actually read images and understand what's in those images. We've tested it, and it's pretty darn incredible. Speaking of new modalities, we're also releasing the next version of our open source speech recognition model, Whisper V3 today. Okay, I'm really excited to hear this. And 
actually a little bit surprised. I didn't know that Whisper was open source. So I probably should have known that, but it's really cool to see that Whisper V3 is launching today and it's continuing to be open source. And for those who aren't aware, Whisper is a voice recognition library. So it basically takes your voice and converts it to text. Fine tuning has been working really well for GPT 3.5. Starting today, we're gonna to expand that to the 16K version of the model. Also starting today, we're inviting active fine tuning users to apply for the GPT 4 fine tuning experimental access program. You may want a model to learn a completely new knowledge domain. So today we're launching a new program called Custom Models. With custom models, our researchers will work closely with a company to help them make a great custom model, especially for them and their use case using our tools. This includes modifying every step of the model training process, doing additional domain specific pre-training, a custom RL post-training process, it's tailored for a specific domain, and whatever else. We won't be able to do this with many companies to start. It'll take a lot of work, and in the interest of expectations, at least initially, it won't be cheap. Okay, that was an interesting announcement. So the cool thing is GPT-4, you can now fine tune it if you're part of the experimental program. That's great, I love to see that. Also, GPT 3.5, the 16K version, you can now fine tune. And I think that's rolling out to everybody. But he announced something really interesting. The OpenAI team will work together with companies to help you create a custom model for your specific use case and for your specific business. Now I can see this being an enormous revenue source for OpenAI. And he already said it, they can't work with a lot of companies, AKA only the biggest ones, and it's not gonna be cheap. Again, only the biggest companies. And then number six, higher rate limits. We're doubling the tokens per minute for all of our established GPT-4 customers. And you'll be able to request changes to further rate limits and quotas directly in your API account settings. This is very exciting because every time that I use an OpenAI API for let's say powering Autogen, I always run into rate limit issues. And so they're immediately doubling the rate limit, which is great. And you can request a rate limit increase directly from the UI, which is nice. Now I requested an increase in my rate limit weeks ago through there. I think it was like a Google form or something. And I still haven't heard back. This is gonna be much easier. So we're introducing copyright shield. Copyright shield means that we will step in and defend our customers and pay the costs incurred if you face legal claims around copyright infringement. And let me be clear, this is a good time to remind people, we do not train on data from the API or ChatGPT Enterprise ever. All right, that's a cool announcement. Microsoft made a similar announcement actually a couple months back where they said, anybody using any of our models, we will protect you if you run into any copyright issue. Now OpenAI is essentially extending that same offer. And that's super welcome as a developer, if I wanna build on top of OpenAI and I know they're getting sued left and right by copyright holders, they're gonna step in and protect me directly. So that is very, very welcome. And they reinforced that they do not train their models on any data that you give them as an enterprise user. There's actually one more developer request that's been even bigger than all of these, and that's pricing. I'm super excited to announce, and GPT-4 Turbo, a better model, is considerably cheaper than GPT-4 by a factor of 3x for prompt tokens and 2x for completion tokens starting today. All right, of course, that's amazing news. One of the biggest hurdles for any developer building on top of GPT-4 is the price. It is super expensive, especially when you start getting into more complex and sophisticated use cases like Autogen or MemGPT. And now it's three times less expensive for the input and two times less expensive for the completions. Okay, so here's the pricing. One penny for a thousand input tokens and three pennies for a thousand output tokens. We're also decreasing the cost of GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. So they're also reducing the price of GPT 3.5 Turbo by three times. And that's really cool because even if you want to use GPT 4 for the more complex use cases, you can still fall back and use GPT 3.5 for things that you know it'll do well. And if you use that hybrid model of 3.5 and 4, you're going to get the best of both worlds where you're going to get the cheapest usage and you're going to get the best model for the specific task at hand. So I'd like to bring on a special guest, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. Thanks so much for coming here. It's fantastic to be here and uh, Sam, congrats. Two questions, won't take too much of your time. How, are, how is Microsoft thinking about the partnership currently? Uh, first. <laughs> okay, yeah, he asked a funny question there. How is Microsoft thinking about the partnership? So Microsoft, as you probably already know, owns, I think, 50% of OpenAI. And he's sitting there thinking, well, we partner with Meta, we also do a bunch of open source stuff, and yeah, we have our fingers in pretty much every bowl. We love you guys. <laughs> All right, I wanna take a second to talk about this. So this is really interesting. And I put out a blog post actually last week about open source models catching up to GPT-4. And it really is clear 
that OpenAI is focused on bringing down the price. And that's specifically what I called out about open source models. As they become better, as tools like Autogen and MemGPT are able to orchestrate a bunch of different fine-tuned verticalized models, that puts a lot of pressure on OpenAI to bring down their prices because it is so much less expensive to use an open source model at scale. ChatGPT now uses GPT-4 Turbo. With all the latest improvements, including the latest knowledge cutoff, which will continue to update, that's all live today. Okay, so really cool. GPT-4 now uses GPT-4 Turbo as of today. So it gets those improved abilities. It gets that newer cutoff date. So I'm excited to test that out. And I believe still GPT-4 is only for ChatGPT Plus users. It can now browse the web when it needs to, write and run code, analyze data, take and generate images, and much more. And we heard your feedback, that model picker, extremely annoying, that is gone starting today. All right, that's a big announcement. So now all of those different tools, the model picker where you have to select Dolly or you have to select web browsing or data analysis, all of those things are gone. It's all blended together in a single interface. That is great. ChatGPT will just know what to use and when you need it. I wanna talk about where we're headed and the main thing we're here to talk about today. Eventually, you'll just ask a computer for what you need and it'll do all of these tasks for you. These capabilities are often talked in the AI field about as agents. The upsides of this are going to be tremendous. So today, we're taking our first small step that moves us towards this future. We're thrilled to introduce GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. All right, there's the big announcement. They are rolling out agents. So. Again, this is another example of if you're a developer and you're building your own agents on top of OpenAI's API, you're probably pretty sad today because this is gonna be a native version of that. So agents, or what they're calling it, GPTs, are models that are specific to certain use cases. And this is a lot of what Autogen has already done. So they're building it directly into ChatGPT now. You can build a GPT, a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything with instructions, expanded knowledge and actions, and then you can publish it for others to use. We've evolved our plugins to be custom actions for GPTs. Okay, so that, that was an interesting point right there. It seems like they're basically retiring plugins and evolved it into being GPT actions, which makes a lot of sense because a few months ago, Sam Altman himself basically said, plugins don't make a lot of sense from a user experience perspective. People don't want to go to ChatGPT and select a plugin and use it there. They want ChatGPT where they're already at in the application. So this makes a lot of sense. So now we'd like to show you a GPT Live. Zapier has built a GPT that lets you perform actions across 6,000 applications to unlock all kinds of integration possibilities. So now let's take a look at what the Zapier GPT looks like. Now, one thing that's interesting is I haven't heard them talking about agent teams, which is a huge benefit of using agents. Being able to use a single agent is okay, but being able to actually have teams of agents working together to solve problems and to solve complex tasks, that is where the real power of agents comes in. And that's what I've been showing you with AutoGPT. So let's get started. Where your GPT will live is on this upper left corner. I'm gonna start with clicking on the Zapier AI actions. And on the right hand side, you can see that's my calendar for today. Now it looks like they might have actually messed up the presentation a little bit because they have another window in the back right here and I think they did not mean to show that. To start, I can ask, what's on my schedule for today? Look at this right here. Somebody's typing behind it, and I don't think they meant to show that. So I wonder if they're doing a little trickery here where they're actually executing things in the background while she's talking. GBT is designed to take in your instructions. And there they just removed it. So I, I definitely don't think they meant to show that. Make the decision on which capability to call to perform that action and then execute that for you. It's already connected to my calendar. It pulls into my, my information and then I've also prompted it to identify conflicts on my calendar. So you can see right here, it actually was able to identify that. So it looks like I have something coming up. All right, so that was literally the prompt that was given in that browser that was behind this browser. So yeah, they definitely did not mean to show that. We've made it so that you can program a GPT just by having a conversation. So I'd like to show you how to build one. All right, and here's what the GPT builder actually looks like. So let's take a look at how to build one. Uh, I worked with founders for years at YC, and still, whenever I meet developers, the questions I get are always about, how do I you know, think about a business idea? Can you give me some advice? Uh, I'm gonna see if I can build a GPT to help with that. So to start off, I just tell the GPT a little bit about, about what I want here. 
and it's gonna go off and start thinking about that, and it's gonna write some detailed instructions for the GPT. Um, it's also gonna, let's see, ask me about- I'll pause it there for a second. So that's really cool. So as you're communicating with ChatGPT on the left side, telling it what you want, on the right side, you get a preview that updates in real time with what your output is gonna look like. So pretty impressive. So it just generated a candidate. Okay, so that's pretty cool. It's using Dolly to generate a little logo for this GPT, and then it automatically puts it here on the right side preview. It calls it Startup Mentor. And I would like to show you the Configure tab. So you can see some of the things that were built out here as we were going. And you can see that there's capabilities here that I could enable. I could add custom actions. Um, I'm gonna upload a file. All right, that's really cool. So basically, just by saying, I wanna be able to use a custom PDF as a knowledge base for answering startup founders, he's now gonna take this document and upload it and basically it's RAG now. So he's using it as retrieval and he's giving it additional knowledge, pretty easy. With GPTs, we're letting people easily share and discover all the fun ways that they use ChatGPT with the world. You can make private GPTs like I just did, or you can share your creations publicly with a link for anyone to use. Or if you're on ChatGPT Enterprise, you can make GPTs just for your company. And later this month, we're gonna launch the GPT store. All right, I think this is their app store. So Apple made so much money on the app store and taking a cut where developers built something on the Apple ecosystem, sold it on the app store, and then of course they get distribution and Apple takes a cut of the revenue. Now I truly think this is OpenAI's app store. So you create a GPT, you publish it on their app store, and then most likely you're gonna be able to charge for it. There's gonna be some amazing ones, and then OpenAI is gonna take a cut. Revenue sharing is important to us. We're gonna pay people who build the most useful and the most used GPTs a portion of our revenue. All right, so yeah, the biggest missing piece here is teams of agents. Why did they not have teams of agents? That is truly the power of agents, is the fact that they can work together and you can have certain agents that are good at certain things working with other agents that are good at other things to accomplish much more complicated tasks. So I bet that's coming, but for now, Autogen is still the best way to accomplish that. All right, and that's it. Those are the major announcements for today. They really do have some big ones. And I'll say one thing about OpenAI, that company ships and they ship a lot. So it's really impressive to see how much they've built since the last time they made some major announcements, which really wasn't too long ago. Now, on the flip side of that, I would be really nervous as an engineer building something on top of OpenAI. Your platform risk is tremendous, so there really is a huge benefit of diversifying the models you use between OpenAI and open source models. So those are all the updates for today. Leave a comment if you wanna hear about anything else related to any of the announcements. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.